might not guess it in the rain, but I'm in one of the prettiest parts of Ireland. This is Kildare, very much horse country, and specifically I'm standing in Og Hill House Stud. They've got some 300 acres here and they've built up a really good reputation for breeding horses over the past 50 years or so. In fact, 2015 was something of a landmark year for them as they celebrated their first Group 1 winner in Marcel, who won the Racing Post Trophy. Still, it's a family-run operation, so we've come here to meet the Highland family and find out a little bit more about them. Situated in prime thoroughbred breeding country in Kildare, Og Hill's superb 2015 saw them strike at the top table for the first time, thanks to Marcel's Racing Post Trophy victory at Doncaster. Zaney dazzles again on Tanmore, and Marcel runs them ragged to cause a huge upset in the Racing Post Trophy. He wasn't the only Og Hill graduate to thrive, however, and the stud also celebrated a Royal Ascot win when Washington DC landed the Windsor Castle Stakes for Aidan O'Brien, before third time Lucky won the Cambridgeshire for Richard Fahey. From a pool of around 30 mares, Og Hill produced six stakes winners in total in 2015, and already has six stakes performers this year, from Gulfstream Park to Royal Ascot. It's a good record from what is very much a family-run operation, and has been for decades as we found out from owner Hugh Highland. We've been breeding here since the 80s, and it could go back farther even. We could go back to 49, when everybody kept a mare. Now, it wasn't a big operation. Everybody kept a mare. We were kind of farmers, that's all. And um, we had, after the war, 49, we had a catalog inside to say all the mares didn't run due to the war. We always find that funny. But um, we've built it up, and we've turned more towards horses, especially since the 80s. We got out of cattle and got out of rain and kept building up the stock and um, built up a broadband with about 25 mares of our own. We board mares for good clients over the years now, good clients and good friends even a lot of them now. And um, we've been lucky with a great year last year, but the, our best year yet. And we're just hoping to, we can continue that. I think it was 27 winners last year, was it? Six stakes winners? Yeah, 28 winners. And like a first group one winner, Marcel, uh, Washington DC, won in Royal Ascot. Uh, third time lucky won the temperature. Like we just out of the blue, everything started to run. Why we did the same as we do every year? We didn't do anything different, but just they all ran. And um, we had the Lincoln winner this year, and the Cora. But um, no, we're very happy. We've upgraded the mares, um, using better sires, I presume, or we're trying to think we are. And um, but it's it's moving along. That's what we hope to improve the stock. When we saw some of the mares and foals, you seem to use a, a mixture of proven sires such as Cape Cross and, and new sires such as, as Born to See. How do you decide which mare goes where? Well, this is the problem. Um, 25 mares, I mean, you can't spend, you have to think of your budget. And I mean, the, the best mares go to the best sires and we try to get the best cover, what we think is the best cover, to start off a young mare. Um, and that's the way we do it. But it, would, it goes into an awful lot of money. Now, we have shares and stallions and things like that, which we try to buy into, and we have some of those to try and cut, to keep down the costs. But it doesn't... Um, it, as I said, if you have 25 mares, and even if you're spending a ten or 10,000, that's 250,000. Mm -hmm. And some of the stallions we'd be using are 40 and 50,000. So you just can't... You have to just cut your cloth to suit your measure. You know, that's it. And we saw Maresma, of course, the, the dam of, of Marcel, and she's now back in fold to Lorman, so that must be quite exciting. It is quite exciting, and of course we're hoping for a, we're hoping for a filly. And unfortunately, with bad news last year, she lost her fall, um, which was a big blow. But you will have you'll have knocks, you know. As I said, it'll be a great race in here. But as sure as you're up there, something will come and kick you, just like that. We were ex looking forward to the fall. Things didn't go right, and um, lost that fall. But um, other than that. Um, we're, we are excited about her. She's in fall, thanks be to God. You know, after losing the fall, to get them back and fall is sometimes not easy. She went back and fall, and we're hoping, as I said, she'd be carrying the filly, we might be able to hold on to that. And we're looking forward to selling the year in out of her by Luke the Vague, who's a very strong type and by the right sire at the moment. We also saw a good-looking Dawn approach colt out of the mare Pleasantry, a half-sister to the top-class miler Kingman. He, too, is bound for book one of Tattlesaw's prestigious October yearling sales, where Oak Hill has had plenty of success before. After extricating ourselves from the yearlings, we headed to see some mares and foals, including How's She Cutting, the dam of Washington DC, with her colt foal, a full brother to the Aidan O'Brien trained star. How's She Cutting is in foal again to Shadwell Stud's sprinting sensation, Mahara, so exciting times lie ahead. 
his nickname around here is called Denzel, but he's a lovely foal. And um, he's possibly, he'll go to the foal sales in, in, um, in December in Newmarket. And um, we're excited about that and we're excited about Washington DC. We're hoping that he can get his head in front of one of these big races. Mm. As he's with the right trainer Aiden, and I mean, if it's possible to be done, it will be done. So we're excited about that too. So every horse that, that comes through here, every horse bred here, you follow them right the way through their careers? Oh, they're like our babies. We follow them, we watch the paper, the paper, the Bible in the morning is the, the racing post, see what's running, what's not running, and we follow them as if they're our own. You think they were our own. I mean, we, we were in the arena with Aidan, and he'd tell you as if you owned the horse, so how, how he's doing, how Washington DC, and where he's going next, and everything else, and with no connection, we haven't sold, but you follow all, you always follow them. They're like your little babies or children, and out and to go to the big world, and and run and hope to do well, you know. That's where I was hoping, but it doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. And how are you finding the market at the moment, the, the yearlings and false sales? Oh, very tricky, very, very tricky. Last year was very peculiar. The book two in your market was very hard to follow, very hard to follow. And the false sale was very tricky. I've always, we always used left yard over in Newmarket as you go in the gate, and you'd, you'd look over at the, the arena, and it would be packed years when you'd be selling falls. We crowded but last year you look over and I mean it was very very late numbers I mean they were getting very very um, critical at the folds you had to be perfect or no nobody was taking any risks or anything like that it was a difficult market but we luckily enough we went to Goffs with 20 something folds and we got them all fo sold mm. and we went to Newmarket I think we only brought back two or three out of it but we, we were stolen 30 folds you know the Oghill team's endeavours were recently rewarded when they picked up an Irish Thoroughbred Breeders' Award. An evening that brings back good memories. It was, it was the biggest surprise we ever got. We, we got an, um, an Irish Thoroughbred Breeders' Award and um, we had no idea we were getting it. We weren't even thinking in those lines because we, our thing was having the winners. When we got those, that was our award. But we couldn't believe it that night, Pat. We all went along, the whole family. I think we took two tables. Or two or three times, I can't remember now which, but um, <laughs> it was a great night and it was a big surprise, but it was a great night. You mentioned there the family, it's very much a family run business. Oh, absolutely, Pat's, Pat's kind of the head of the family, he's, he's, he's here um, and he, he's great and he looks after the office work and all. I, myself and my son kind of do the, still doing the physical bit, but and we, sold, we fall down a lot of mares, we fall mm. up in the 80s or near 90s mares last year for clients and our own. And um, look, you're at them every day, you follow them, like the season is over, for the breeding season is over. And we was, today we spent the day doing mares and foals, correction, mares we think we took 25 through today and we'll do that every week. There'll be 25 going through the system, getting corrected or whatever they need. Mm -hmm. And that goes on on the daily basis, that's what we'll be at now before the sales, until we won't feel until the year of sales start to prep. With so many mares, foals and yearlings to look after, do Hugh and his team of family members ever get a day off? That seems to be an unusual concept in this part of the world. It doesn't happen. Um, I like to take a holiday and I go to the west of Ireland. And uh, if I get a Thursday to uh, Monday or Tuesday and you can get to the west in two hours and you come down about five gears when you go across the Shannon and relax. After decades of breeding and dreaming of big days to come, it seems they have finally arrived for Oghill. <laughs>